Well guys, if you couldn't already tell, we like old drag cars and we just bought a new one. Now, this one is a little different than some of our old stuff and I thought I'd just give you a quick walk around on this thing and then as kind of like a bonus coverage, we're gonna take a little walk through some of these others that are sitting outside of our garage. So we're gonna start here. This is an altered Roadster, uh, about a 120 inch wheelbase, something like that. We haven't actually measured it. Uh, something that's like this was built in the 70s and 80s. These were really popular. And you'll see that this has a boxed rail instead of what now, if you were gonna build a drag car, you'd do a uh, round tubing, like a double rail. This was the way they did it back in the day. Totally okay, it's totally safe. Uh, nothing really structurally wrong with that. It's just not how they do it today. Uh, we look at the roll cage. This is actually pretty decent. I don't know how thick it is. I don't know anything about the material itself. I would imagine it's all just mild steel and I'd imagine it was all just MIG welded. So nothing real, real fancy, but probably perfectly safe. Um, let's talk about, let's actually just start up here. Front suspension, there is none. No front suspension whatsoever. These little brackets just bolt to this frame, or sorry, bolt to the axle. It's got a round tube axle. Notice there's no front brakes whatsoever. Just the wheel mounts right to the spindle. Then these spindle mount wheels, they could actually tell us a little bit of something because these are legit weld racing pro stars. And let's see, manufacturer's date. I don't know if you can see that. There it goes, four of 1989. So that gives us a real good idea of when this thing was built. That sounds about right. End of the 80s, early 90s, altered roadsters were still very popular. You can see that this thing's got a Model T based body and it's just sitting there right now. It's not actually bolted on, but it has been mounted securely before. I'm not sure what happened here. They got a little carried away with that. Um, let's look at the wheels back here. We got center lines. These are uh, probably 14 inches wide, if I had to just guess. 13 by 42 inch Goodyear slicks. They've got some major dry rotting, um, but they still look cool. Let's see, what else can we talk about here? Um, I like that it has this aluminum butterfly wheel, and you can see that the steering is still nice and tight. Uh, the brakes are up on this thing. Notice it's got a brake pedal and this monster arm that goes all the way back to the, the uh, master cylinder, which I'll show you in a minute. Got a cool little aluminum gas pedal. Steering box is in place, mounted securely. All of this stuff looks pretty nice. It looks like this car would actually perform pretty well, even though these altereds, they kind of wanted to kill you. I mean, they, they were not the best handling cars. Short wheelbase. And as you can see back here, no suspension, no shocks, no nothing. It's just welded. Uh, well, the rear end's bolted in, but it's the brackets are welded to the frame, welded to the rear end housing, bolted right into place. Uh, it's got pretty good looking disc brakes on it. You'll see right there, the master cylinder, just a little single pot, like a GM style master cylinder. Um, nothing real fancy back here. The old rear end housing's been cut down. Uh, it does have, if we look in here, I'll show you this. This is kind of a highlight of the car, really. It's got a nodular center section. That's a real good piece. That's something that, you know, if you're gonna race this car competitively, that would be important. It's also got strange axles in there and big studs. I mean, it's it's got some good pieces, even though they're outdated. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, it came with this fuel cell. It's not bolted in, but it's, a pretty good looking little piece. Um, master kill switch is there. We've got a single tail light. This thing is bare minimum. There's there's nothing here that's not necessary on this car. So this thing is pretty light. I haven't weighed it or anything like that, but I would imagine that this would be a pretty fast car even with a mild small block in it. So when we bought it, we got two sets of engine plates, motor plates, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one for small block, one for big block. We got a mid plate and, you know, we could very, very easily make this thing a functional car. We've got engines and parts and things that we could stick together and make this into something that you could actually drive. Of course, it would take a lot of money because these tires, 
not so good. Back tires, not so good. You know, you'd have to spend some money freshening it up. But overall, it's a pretty presentable car. As far as the stance is concerned, uh, you notice I fell over all this fiberglass. We'll get to that in just a minute. But overall, the stance is pretty good. The roll cage design is good. A lot of these uh, alters from the 80s and 90s, they were just goofy looking. They didn't have the best appearance. But this one's got a real good look to it. And uh, that was part of the reason why I wanted to buy it was the price was right. And, you know, it's got a pretty decent look. It's not totally goofy. So um, that's pretty much it on this one. I'm pretty happy overall with this thing, whether we put an engine in it or we just talk about it and turn around and sell it. I think we did okay on this one. I think that, uh, you know, it kind of goes along with our collection here. And speaking of that, I'm gonna walk you through a few of these things. Um, this is gonna be um, just a quick view of some of our collection of old drag cars. And if you're new to the channel, this will be new to you. If you're been, you've been around the channel, I hope that you'll stick around and walk with us because this might bring back some good memories of videos that I've done in the past. So this car, this is a Kellison sports car body that was turned into a, a one-piece flopper. This was not technically a funny car, even though the body tilted at the back. This was technically an altered. It ran in double B altered. It had a blown and injected 392 Hemi engine in it, a completely custom frame. This thing was state of the art when it debuted in 1967. And it raced through the mid seventies. And you know, after that, the chassis got damaged and the body was actually just kind of traded around and it ended up in Louisville, Kentucky. That's where I ended up buying it. Um, it's rough, there's not a whole lot left of it, but there was enough pieces here that I could positively identify the car. Um, of course, we brought it here. Unfortunately, haven't had a chance to do much with it. Uh, it's still just kind of sitting, but a really neat piece of our collection. Uh, maybe someday we'll patch it up and make something out of it. This guy had a bad day. Uh, okay, here's another one. This one, this old dragster, this is something we bought off of Tony McConnell. And he's a Louisville, Kentucky hot rodder and drag racer. Got a killer collection of old drag cars. Uh, I bought this off of him just because it was cool, just because it was something we just had to have. Um, I have not been able to identify this car yet. But based on this style of roll bar and the big main frame rails and some of the crude, very thick metals, um, I'm guessing this is a late 50s dragster. Um, there's not a whole lot left of it. It does have some peculiar details like a foot operated brake, which most of these cars had handbrake. Uh, it's got this big push bar on the back and it's got this super big chrome, I guess you call that a pitman arm for the steering. So it's got some peculiar details. I haven't been able to pin anything down yet. <clears throat> But maybe someday, maybe someday. Uh, sitting right here, this is not a dragster. This is called a Yazoo. And this is a go-kart that you could have bought in the 50s. Uh, it's kind of based off of, a, I guess, an Indy car or a sprint car with the little nose and tail. This thing is rusty and it's completely froze up. But it's a pretty neat little piece. My dad's had that for lots of years. And then sitting next to it, it's got lumber piled up on it and who knows what. This is uh, one of the most well-documented cars we have, surprisingly. Uh, it's rusty, there's not a lot left of it here, but this was a very, very competitive car in the 1950s. And it raced out of Southern California, which we still don't know why it ended up in Tennessee, but I'll tell you just a little bit about it. And if you wanna know the full story, the full history, you'll have to go back and watch my video that I did on this car. But the most peculiar thing on this car is the frame rails. These frame rails are made out of a uh, wing strut material, which is actually chromoly, and it's streamlined. It looks like it's oval, but it's actually wider here than it is on the bottom. So pretty high tech stuff for back in the day. Chassis was built by Joe Ito, and the car was raced by Tets Ishimaru, and he was a Japanese drag racer based out of Southern California. 
and he ran this car originally with an inline six cylinder and then with a 430 cubic inch Lincoln engine with all sorts of different induction setups. It had multiple carburetors. It had a pot vent blower set up. It had a conventional blower set up. And this car ran from around 1957 to 1960. Pretty, pretty amazing car, even though it's rough and rusty. Uh, the one on the end here, this one is one that we bought several years ago. We bought it out of a junkyard in Cleveland, Tennessee. And it was actually cut in two right here. You can see where we just kind of gob some welds back on there to make it look like a car again. But this was cut in two and just stuffed in between two cars in an old old car junkyard. And you'll see that it's got a pretty neat look to it. It's got a, a little longer wheelbase than most of ours. And you can see this front section of the frame is smaller tubing than the back. So this thing had been front halved at some point in its life. And look back here, these big tubes, look, you can even see the threads right there. That's made out of water pipe. So super sketchy, not what you wanna be wrapping yourself in and going down the drag strip. It's got a Tri-5 Chevy rear end in it. It's been narrowed. I thought that was pretty neat. And then we've got some actual Tri-5 Chevy wheels on there, 55 Chevy wheels with these recap slicks that were actually made locally right over in Inglewood, Tennessee. So lots of neat little pieces on here, a little wood grain butterfly wheel. Uh, peculiar things on this one include this Volkswagen steering box. That's not real common on these cars. And this exit over here on the right side of the car, usually the steering would exit over here and go down for whatever reason they built it that way. Since we've owned it, we stuck this motor on it. It's just sitting there, literally sitting on the frame rails. It's just a 265 out of a stock 55 Chevy, out of that 55 Chevy, actually. And, you know, it's rough and rugged and ragged, and it just kind of goes along with the rest of this. But you'll see that the old altered Roadster, that's actually a pretty good piece compared to the rest of our junk. Uh, this is something that, with a little bit of work, with some of these parts that we got with it, we could actually make something out of this car and have something we could go take to the drag strip occasionally. We'll see how get, how far we get with it. Um, I don't have a lot of confidence that we're gonna put anything together. Uh, we've got too many projects back at my place, too many projects inside of this garage to worry about that. So either way, stay tuned. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video and feel free to leave a comment below. Stay tuned for more old drag car content as well as other content on some of our other project cars. Thank you for watching.